We're here today at 43rd Street and we're in star dressing room number one talking to Charles Shaughnessy, finding out about an incredible performer because you've done so much. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Eton. I went to Eton College. Eton College in Cambridge, if you can believe it. I mean, yeah, it's like this sort of English upper class education. And um, um, what am I doing here? <laughs> I, it's been a long story. Forgive me, were you born with a silver spoon in your gob? You know, uh, my, my, it's a long story. My dad's stepfather had a, was silver spoon. My dad actually his father was Canadian his mother was American but his father was killed in the first war or like a week before he was born So, and his stepfather was a real knob and uh, so my dad grew up at court and um, because he was a courtier so he went to Eton and as was a sort of tradition, he felt like, well, my son should go to Eton. But my dad's actually a, a, a writer. I mean, a sort of good, uh, you know, hardworking writer who doesn't really have, you know, certainly doesn't have any silver spoons left in the family um, chest. Um, but I did get this terrifically privileged education, which I, I really do, um, you know, feel very grateful for. I, you know, the people have different views about it, but I, I had a great time there and um, feel it was a great education for me. Does it go against you in one sense that people don't regard this as a proper job? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's always a little shocking when you, you know, all your friends are going into banking and the city and Lloyd's of London or, you know, the guards, you know, army or green jackets. And, and I was going to drama school and, you know, singing Godspell and things like this. Um, but that's just, you know, what I wanted to do. And actually, there are quite a few old Etonian actors now. It's becoming more popular. When I was there, they built this fabulous theatre, the Farrah Theatre. So um, I actually spent most of my time at Eton acting and directing. I mean, we actually got a chance to direct a couple of plays there. You've got an incredible voice. I think that's the thing that came across to me uh, the other day when I saw the show. It's such an amazing growl in it, which is perfect for the part you play. Um, taking that further, why then do you think you, you ended up here and not in Britain on stage? Um, one reason, I, I, this is an old chestnut of a story, but uh, I met a girl at drama school. I went to Central School of Speech and Drama, and I met a young American girl from Studio City, California, and we fell in love. And at the end of our training, I went to work in England. She came back to America. And after six months, I just, uh, I thought, you know, this isn't working. I, I've got to be with her. So I called up. And at that time, it was 1983, and England was going through a pretty rough stage in 83. It was a, not a great time. Um, on any level and um, you know the the sun the sand and the freshly squeezed orange juice was almost too much to, to resist so I came out we decided you know we had to live either here or in England and Susan my wife you know every time she lived in England she'd get chill blains and like, you know, frostbites <laughs> so she said I'm never going back in that country so we moved here and so I, I just moved my life here and um, started from scratch you know and just got a, working eventually got started uh, acting you, you know I like this I like this country I mean it's it's a great place to be it seems like the British slash American dream being sat here now on Broadway in an amazing show what was it like getting here though I mean did it all go as smoothly as you hoped no I mean this was like right out of left field this was not something I had on the radar at all I did t I was doing TV and then the nanny was this big sitcom hit and so I became a sitcom star as the sort of sitcom dad which has a double-edged is a double-edged sword and then since then I've done all kinds of other things uh, but I've never done a musical and then suddenly out of nowhere a musical in Pittsburgh I got a chance to do My Fair Lady at the CLO in Pittsburgh which I did and loved had a great time doing that and then a week later uh, this came up and I didn't think there was any serious it was serious I mean John Cullen was leaving and I didn't think I was like going to be John Collins, you know, take over from him. And then suddenly it kind of became a reality. And I flew out to meet the producers and landed two minutes into the big blackout. My plane landed and we were stuck in this plane. And the whole of the eastern seaboard was plunged into blackness for two days. And I staggered around the streets of New York trying to find these producers. I mean, literally kind of on cell phones. And we finally met up in some apartment, you know, by candlelight. And I sang a song and I did the scene and 
they said we'd love you to do this and then I had to get back to LA and kind of unpack <laughs> and repack and come out and suddenly bang I was doing Broadway so it's it's the yeah, it's it's I'm still kind of in shock really um, and uh, just loving it you know I'm loving being here I miss the only drawback is my family's not here they're coming out to visit but I've never been away this long so that's the only kind of downside is you know is the best the medium's very different isn't it between TV and theatre it's true it's a very different energy if there are certain kind of TV shows where you which are more like film and you have to bring it very in the nanny was a little more presentational we actually did it in front of an audience on a friday night um but it was you know in a studio into cameras but we were able to be it was much more theatrical than you would otherwise find in tv so yeah you know movies and film is a whole different a whole different thing goes on you know you know you hardly move a muscle i mean in fact i worked with a really good uh, film actor once and i was doing a scene and i thought oh well you know i'm gonna blow him off the screen in this scene because i'm like doing all the acting he's not doing he's gonna come across like nothing and then i saw him rushing, yeah. you know, and this performance like magic performance coming from this guy <laughs> and there i am like chewing the scenery so you know i learned a lesson that was when i was younger and, and you learn a lesson that yeah it all goes on behind the eyes do you think it helps you coming from Britain and, and having the Eaton upbringing and the, and the voice and the, and the intellect, probably? The only advantage that it, it probably has is that in a meeting or an audition situation, um, I can sit there and in, internally I can think, you know, well, you may be the, the studio head, you may be the yeah, producer, yeah. but I can speak Greek. <laughs> you know, you know, I can speak ancient Greek. I can read Aristophanes in the original. So it may, you know, you kind of have a little bit of, so no one can really get the upper hand. I, I didn't realize. So ordering olives and hummus is always good, is it? When yeah, you're in an yeah, audition? Yeah, I, I, can, I can go to Rome and speak Latin. So, so that's really the only advantage. I mean, I think, um, you know, unfortunately in our culture today, um, intellect is something that scares people. Uh, there's a certain kind of a distrust of anyone who's Jared smarter than you, it's Jared just kind of sad. But I'm getting into like Jared cultural Jared. commentary. But um, but I, you know, I enjoy I, I enjoyed having that uh, in uh, education. I enjoy being able to. Um, you know, I'm very, I have a great inquiring mind. I'm very, my wife will tell you, I'm like constantly reading newspapers and magazines and talking and watching, and learning. Uh, uh, so that helps, you know, I think that education helps the brain to assimilate information and process it. This is probably the most stupid question you'll ever be asked, but if you hadn't have gone to Eton, do you think you will still have got here now? Do you think you will have had the drive and the ability to still make it here? Uh, that's a very good question. And, um, a very good question and I I don't know you know Eaton gave it, 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 the one thing it gave me more than anything else was terrific self-confidence it's just the way that the the what you paid for in that school and what you got out of it was um, a chance to it was like a little university you really grew up young and you had a lot of responsibility a lot of autonomy so it gave me terrific sense of of, of confidence in my own being so um, and that probably has fed me, you know, all my life. If I didn't have that, that's a you know, gazillion dollar question. Can it open doors for you? Um, not in the way it used to, you know, and, and in some ways it does the opposite. And I, I think in some ways now there's been a backlash to, you know, sort of edu the, the Eton Cambridge, Eton Oxbridge education. In the old days, absolutely, you could walk straight into a, you know, really good job in the bank or daddy's firm or, or um, you know, go, go into the army and rise to, in the ranks. I'm not sure that's true now. I think that it's much more meritorious now. There's a sort of much more of a meritocracy out there. And you, you know, if you're, if you're smart and you're capable, it doesn't really matter where you've gone. You might have gone to, you may have gone somewhere else, but um, I don't think it opens as much as it did. And certainly it can't do here on Broadway. I mean, if you're not yeah. good, you just can't get the role. No, right? and as far as acting is concerned, no. I mean, no one's heard of it, and especially out here. No, one's, no one knows. What nobody really cares, I suppose. If no. you can't perform, it's no right. good, is it? Exactly. If you can't <laughs> deliver, forget it. You know? Uh, you know, and there's this cult of personality nowadays. You always get a chance. You know, nowadays you can be in a reality show and um, someone will give you, a, you know, say, well, you ate a bug on an island, so now you can do this play. But you get one bite at it, and if then you don't, 
pr you produce, you know, you can't actually pull it off, then that's the end of it. So yeah, you, you know, the proof is in the pudding here. And that's what I like about America. America's v all about the proof in the pudding. You know, you've got to deliver. Um, there are no free lunches here. It's been a real pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for inviting us into your dressing room, especially on a two show day. I know it's the worst day to possibly spur the time, but you're in town is the musical. It's an amazing show. Don't be put off by the title. I always say this to people because you even talk about that in the show, don't you? That yeah. It's not very glamorous, is it? No, no, they actually, t they laugh about it. We joke about the name of the title. One of the characters says, what an awful title for a show. Um, but it's, you know, and there was a lot of talk about changing it. And the writer said, no, it ha this is, has to be the name of the show. This is what it's all about. And it sets up the mood of the show and the kind of an anarchic and iconic quality of it. You, you can't change it. So they stuck with it. And we've been running two and a half years. So it's a really funny show. It's a great show and brilliantly performed. Congratulations on your performance. Uh, Charles Shaughnessy is the star. Uh, London born, eaten, taught and uh, here on Broadway. What more can you ask? It must be uh, it must be a thrill for your mother. Oh, yeah, it is. My family are just uh, over the moon. My mum's going to try and come. My dad is going to try and come out. He may not be. He's uh, getting on a bit and may not make it. But my mum's going to try and get out here before the end of the year. So, yeah, they're thrilled. Thank you so much for talking to us today on the magic of the musicals on Broadway.